Good morning. So, there's a scuttlebutt on the Fujifilm GFX 102. I've been shooting this camera for a month now, out in the field, mountains, desert, and so on. And I own the GFX 100S, its predecessor. You can see they're pretty, well, they're pretty, pretty close in size and shape. That's not an issue at all. The, uh, the 102 is a better camera. There's no question about it. But how much better is it? Should you spend $7,500 to replace your $6,000 GFX 100S? In a nutshell, it depends. Um, if you're a video guy, you've got a, a, some, some fairly solid reasons, but it's still a pretty half-assed video camera, and you really ought to be just shooting a Sony A1 or something like that with 8K or a Nikon or something. I, I think, because uh, the 8K on the Fujifilm is very limited. So here's the thing for me. Um, w the way you interact with this camera 99% of the time, at least for me, is the CVF. Yeah, I may use the rear LCD, but it's almost always the EVF. So what you get in the, in the 2 is you get a, a 9 point something megapixel OLED display, which is fantastic. It's as good as it's as good an EVF as any in the industry, and it's a 1x magnification, 1.0x, which is better than any other camera on the market to my knowledge. And you notice that when you use it, it's so easy on the eyes, so beautiful to look through. And if I want to focus on a stone 20 feet out there and know that I focused on the stone, not one inch in front of it or one inch behind it, with a fast lens like this f1.7 55, this EVF lets me do that. So it makes focusing a joy. If I want to manually focus, same deal. That thing just goes cracklingly sharp. And then you got the 100S, whose EVF is, well, it's a turd. I mean, it's, it's dark, it's dull, it feels blurry compared to this camera. It, it, there's just no comparison. When I switch back and forth with these out in the field, I'm looking at a mountainside. I look through this camera, I shoot something, and then for comparison, I set this one up with the same lens. It's like, oh, what happened? Everything looks like a dull, smeared rendition of what this thing's showing me. It's that big a difference. And for me, that's, that's a huge thing. Uh, I don't have an extra 7,500 or 4,000 or whatever to replace the camera, so that's a bit of a problem for now. But that is the number one thing I would say you get out of this camera. Now, Fuji... Moving on to another subject, Fujifilm says the sensor in this camera is better. And it may well be they've got an ISO 80, they've got different micro lenses, yada yada. Uh, I discount that. I think, it, it's, I think it probably is a little better. I have to go home and prove it with the images I've taken. But, um, eh. the, uh, but the other thing that really works matters for me is the interactivity of the camera. The 102 is just more responsive. And so, you know, if you're trying to get something done, light's changing, a responsive camera is super important. You know, if you want to review an image or uh, do various things, that's really important. That's really all there is between these two cameras. I mean, for me, that's all there really is. See if Express Type B, I guess that's another bonus. Okay, I'll give it that. But here's the thing. <laughs> Fujifilm has apparently used essentially the same buggy usability uh, problem firmware in both cameras. So all the bugs you have in this camera are in this camera. <laughs> all the usability problems you have in this camera are in this camera. It, they're like carbon copy clones of each other for all the crappy stuff that they've not bothered to fix for five years. For example, focus bracket feature does not reach infinity focus. Does not. Every lens I've tried, it fails. And you can prove this by taking your own carefully focused infinity frame and proving, even at f9, that the camera screwed up. Both of them screw up. Both of them have the same crappy, inscrutable, near-far interface, which I won't even use because it's too hard to use. Same feature set. Fujifilm has not fixed a usability problem or, or significant bug in, either these, in, in this camera for years, or the 100 for years. Well, obviously they fix bugs, but not the ones that matter to me. And those same bugs that bother me are in this camera. The same usability problems that bother me are in this camera. For example, I have to switch at least three settings to go between 
my tripod based shooting and my handheld shooting out in the field. This drives me nuts. I am on the tripod, da 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 da. Okay, change, monkey, 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 monkey. Okay, three settings changed. Handheld shoot, go back on tripod. You cannot actually, you can't set up a custom setting group. You, the settings I need to change are excluded from being able to add to the custom settings group. You can't assign some of these things to, to buttons. Others you can, some you can't. You can't, put, you can't even put certain things in the my menu. Some you can, some you can't. I don't know who designed this thing, but I, I'm betting they're Fortran programmers. Uh, that's an inside joke. I'm a programmer myself. Um, the user view problems have not been fixed, have not been improved. You basically get a better EVF, maybe a better sensor, CF Express uh, uh, um, type, uh, type B card, and a little more responsiveness with some things. But you don't get a faster focus bracket. You don't get a meaningly faster delete, which is still glacially slow. You don't get the ability to say delete a focus stack you just shot. You don't get anything new, anything good. There's been no innovation in terms of usability thinking by the engineers at Fujifilm. Literally, they it's like they sat down and said, let's not make anything better. And they got their task done. <laughs> they didn't make any any of the usability better. Um, as far as focus, I should say the, uh, the 102 is in their marketing, they say it has surgically precise autofocus. Well, I've observed dozens, if not hundreds of times over the past month, this camera will beep and light up its green dot saying it's got focus when you can just look at it and it's, pardon my French, effing blurry. Right there you can see it's blurry. Beep, I'm in focus. No, you're not. You need F32 to get it in focus. It's still, focus is still badly broken in confirming focus when it's not in focus. It's a joke. Surgically accurate AF, that might be true when it gets it right. Whether it gets that 90% of the time or 95, I don't know. Maybe if you're shooting portraits, it does a good job, but I can tell you out in the field, if you're focusing at infinity, this camera screws the pooch way more often than you'd want it to. And as a result, you cannot trust it. You have to check focus before you, you shoot your scene. Otherwise, you can end up with, with series or series or individual photographs which are just not focused uh, well, or I mean, like they look they're almost sharp but not quite sharp, and you won't be sure why. It's the camera. It's and that's a real bummer. So uh, Fujifilm has done a lot right in this camera, but they have a big pile of homework ahead of them to really make this into a first-class camera like a Sony. I mean, Sony never never pulls any of these stunts on me. I can delete instantly. I can 99 times out of 100, it focuses perfectly. This is not that camera. Do not buy this camera if you if you want that kind of performance. Buy it if you want the resolution and the total image quality. Then it's a fantastic camera, and I love it. But I just wish Fujifilm would do their homework and get serious about making it right. Anyway, that's that's what I could think of in a nutshell. <laughs> Have a nice day.